plus d'un but de synopsis. Je suis là. Uh, Nah, not me, man. You do it, man. You pick this stupid piece of trash. <laughs> to be fair, that's not a, that's not a bad uh, that's not a bad shout. Okay, I'll do the synopsis. I'll do the synopsis to the best of my ability, but I might be reading from another synopsis, isn't it? Okay, well, not, not yet. Not yet. I'm going to introduce this all anyway. So, and I've got I've got something to say. Okay. Welcome to Get to the Horror. This is episode two. Uh, today we'll be um, covering the 1992. Uh, Francis Francis Ford Coppola 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 um, Bram Stoker's Dracula uh, I'm Eastie uh, Tande say hi yo uh, Shads yes and Hamza <laughs> good evening <laughs> <laughs> now uh, before before we kick off I, I definitely feel that we need to get this out of our system Monica's boobs are the best in the world. <laughs> now, I, have, I have seriously, Malika, what's her surname? Bellucci. Bellucci. I have, I have seriously found through watching this film <laughs> my favourite <laughs> movie, <laughs> movie boobies. Uh, honest, honest to God, if this was a podcast called Best Movie Boobies, it would be one episode, it would be about her, and then we'd quit because there's no more boobies after that point. So I needed to get that out of my system. <laughs> Now I have. Thank you very much for that. Shads. We appreciate your contribution. Uh, <laughs> Shads, this was, this was your choice of movie, so uh, give us this. was well, my choice of movie. Thank you very much, Easty. Um, just wanted to say, just before we do continue, hey guys, don't forget to uh, subscribe and subscribe to the channel, you know. Um, right. Absolutely destroy that like button. Yeah, like, 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 even, even subscribe if you hate us because you need to know when we've got a new video up so you can troll us again. I mean, yeah. come on. That's why I'm going to subscribe. <laughs> Bram. Troll myself. Stoker. Not Stoker, but Bram Stoker's Dracula. Or Dracul, as he likes to be called in the movies. Um, Man like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hey, what can I say? This this movie, um, uh, an honest opinion. Um, I did have to watch this movie in parts. Um, you know, it, it did require uh, concentration. Um, but hey, that was my that was my own personal experience with this film. It is quite a long, quite a lengthy film as well. I think it's about almost clocks just over two hours, doesn't it? Um, a bit of a lengthy one. So yeah, guys, uh, make sure you've got plenty of time. Uh, set aside when you watch this film. Um, so the synopsis of the movie. So you know, um, so you got the starting point where we see uh, Dracul. Uh, you know Gary Oldman's character. Obviously, you don't see Dracula. Obviously, you don't see Dracula. Uh, but you see him, as, you know, dressed up in a knight's outfit. You know that the 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 Turkish I think it was the Turkish Muslims that were um, uh, invading you know Eastern Europe and um, uh, so things never change. Every woman's character. <laughs> point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know when I when I saw the that, views I thought, and opinions yeah. expressed by this. <laughs> I'm just saying, no, it's like how the past obviously re repeats into the present. Right. That's right, man. Yeah, so um, fashion changes. <laughs> it's a holy war going on so we see um this is where we see anthony hopkins character um you know speak to uh dracula as we see him later on he tells him look you gotta go uh fight for fight for us um so he does so obviously he leaves behind his beloved elizabeth um to go who he who he you know he he thinks the world of so you go, he rides into battle, you know, you see a very bloody, gory battle happening, you know, loads of people getting killed, stabbed up by our our anti-hero, as we uh, learn later on. Um, but uh, we then learn that uh, as he comes back after winning this uh, war, his, uh, he, he is, uh, his beloved is tricked. Uh, she is told that he has died, so she takes her own life. Um, coming back, uh, you know, Dracul, he is outraged. Our, he our anti hero, he is outraged and he denounces Christianity, he denounces God, he's. 
stabs the cross. You see blood pouring out. You know, Anthony Hopkins' character is all like flustered and scared. He's like, oh my God, what's going on? Um, and then you, do know, see... you do know that Anthony Hopkins just plays two parts, don't you? He's not yeah. Van Helsing as a priest yeah, and then later Hel- on. Point. <laughs> he's not Van Helsing at this point, of course. Um, so, um, yeah, so that happens. Um, you know, he, he denounces uh, God and all that, and he becomes this uh, creature, this Dracula. Um, we then uh, fast forward to uh, England, where we see our our hero, we could say, Keanu Reeves. You know what I mean? Keanu Reeves. Uh, a young Keanu Reeves with the with the, with the middle parting haircut, um, and the hair is something very uh, notable, as we will mention later on. Um, he is with his uh, his beloved uh, Winona Ryder, yeah, uh, Mina, as we call her. <laughs> um, you know, they're having a little little you know kiss and that in the garden, and uh, Keanu, uh, his name Jonathan. Sorry, he tells Jonathan Harker. Me, look, huh? Jonathan Harker. Harker. I like to use first name basis, isn't it? Jonathan Harker, yeah? And he's talking to Mina and he says, look, I've got to go do this thing, some kind of tax business. You know, this guy is buying all the property in London. I've got to go see this guy. Um, So he then gets onto a uh gets gets onto a train then off the train we see him in Romania he then gets into a horse and carriage he's riding through to Dracul's castle um you see some wolves mist fog it's all like setting the scene getting you ready and then it's you that know, big... you can miss scenes <laughs> <laughs> this is almost as long as the movie itself <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I'm just so like getting more, away. With, definitely know, more entertaining than a stupid film. Okay, anyway. that's. Uh, <laughs> well, no, no, your opinion. Anyway, carry on, carry on. Okay, okay. So let's say now, um, you know, uh, Keanu. We then see him, Jonathan. He's now stuck in the castle with uh, uh well, they have dinner in that first, but then you know, uh, Dracula says to Keanu, "Look, you're gonna have to stay with me." We then, uh, you know, a bit. A few more scenes happen. We see Mina getting told that, you know, uh, Jonathan is going to stay there and that. Let's fall, fast forward a bit more. We get to... I thought you were going to describe the dinner. That's it. That was <laughs> <laughs> there was a roast chicken. There was a roast chicken. Yeah? Okay. Um, so let's fast forward a bit. Mina's got a friend, a redhead a girl. Her name is Lucy. Um, you know, she, she at some point in the movie you will see, she ends up having... Uh, I don't know if it was consensual, but she ends up having <laughs> with the with the werewolf. Um, the Why werewolf is that scene always brought up with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so animalistic, you know. It just shows the the passion that we have during has, sexual uh, in, in, uh, intercourse. You know. Has this scene awakened a new fetish in you? Is this why you're growing your hair? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and fast forward that scene, yeah. Then we're gonna move on to um, Mina. You know, she meets um, this uh, mysterious character in uh, England who wants to go around. You know, see the cinema, see the theatre. Um, at first, she finds him rude, and then they become friends. Um, we then learn that um, Lucy, um, she at this point she's turning slowly, slowly into this um, creature. Um, she has three suitors which want to marry her. She only chooses one of them. Uh, there's a mad doctor. There's a there's a mad uh, guy trapped in in his asylum. That's uh, Dracul's uh, servant. Um, we then uh, fast forward a little bit more, guys, and then we get to the scene where uh, Lucy she uh, tries to uh, uh, bite one of her, su- uh, you know, the one who she was going to marry. They end up uh, killing her, um, driving a. a, a, a no, they don't drive a stake through a heart at this point, but later on they do. Um, they also, we oh, also. Spoiler alert! <laughs> sorry, sorry. Can you add some more detail to that, please? <laughs> no, 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 no. Later, that's later. Okay, and then what happens is Jonathan somehow um, he escapes the castle because at, at some uh, at this point he is still being held captive. I don't know if it's against his will or not because he seemed like he didn't he knew seem what like he was doing. Bad deal. He didn't seem like a bad yeah. deal, you know. Um, <laughs> But he somehow escapes because these nuns, uh, they take him in. And then uh, he somehow, uh, he writes to Mina. Mina makes her way over to uh, to where he is. And then they both escape. His hair, for some reason, turns grey. 
Um, we're then back in England where, uh, you know, some more stuff happens. And then, uh, what's it? Um, uh, you know, uh, Dracul learns that Mina and Jonathan are together. He gets upset, uh, very angry. Uh, for some reason, we're then transported back to Romania towards the end um, where he's, you know, Dracula is running off. Um, you know, uh, and 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 then uh, there's this whole scene of trying to capture Dracula, trying to kill him. Um, uh, in the end, Mina chops off his head, and hey, man. Uh, to be honest, for me, it, that that sums up Dra- Dracul. Bram Stoker's Dracula. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> I thought we'd have to make it. Just now, but I did it on purpose. I was starting. To, I was starting to think when you first started, we were going to have to make this episode a fourth part. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, um, before, uh, uh, interestingly enough, I did do. Uh, I would. Uh, would. I did want to share this with you guys. Um, you know whether or not. I think a lot of our uh, listeners may want to know whether or not. Uh, you know, Dracula was a real character. You know, and uh, I did a little bit of reading on it, and uh, it seems like there was a there was a guy. Um, the ruler of Wallachia, now part of Romania, Vlad Tepes, became Vlad notorious yeah. Yeah, for the brutal tactics he employed against his enemies, including torture, mutilation, and mass murder. Though he didn't shy away from disembowelment, decapitation, or boiling or skinning his victims alive, his preferred method was impalement or driving a wooden stake through their bodies and leaving them to die of exposure. So, you know, uh, we think that Bram Stoker took quite a lot, drew quite a lot of inspiration from this character, uh, who is almost like a real life, you know, the real life Dracula. Dracula. So, um, how do we? Uh, so, just just to start us off, with, how do we? How do we feel about this this movie? And I think, given that we already know his opinion, I'm going to start with Sunday on this. <laughs> how do you feel about this movie, Sunday? <laughs> okay, so I mean, I'll I'll, I'll sp- I'll reply with with how I feel about the film, which is that um, I felt it was overly long. It's 128 minutes, but it's a long 128 minutes. Um, I felt that actually watching it again, you know, the last time I watched this film, I was a young whippersnapper. And some elements I found scary or some elements I maybe didn't understand. Now, watching it again as an adult, it's not a horror. You know, it's uh, or not a true horror. It's a, it's a gothic romance. And whoa, whoa! Having... Have you been reading my notes? <laughs> hey, great man! Yeah. Uh, it's a gothic romance, and that comes with its pros and cons. I think technically, in terms of how the narrative is delivered, um, and I, in the time between when I saw it as a kid and the time that I, you know, recently just watched it for the sake of this, I've read the book, and I've read other vampire novels and once you read Bram Stoker's Dracula you get an appreciation for how the character of Dracula has evolved over time um, and the take of Dracula in Bram Stoker's one I think has become the kind of iconic vampire um, so I give it credit for that uh, because you know Dracula is now sorry vampires are now sexy you know they're now seductive um, whereas you know in the original book Dracula is just a weirdo, you know, um, hunting off the girl. He's, there's no romantic interest or anything there. He's just a creep. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that I think is quite cool. It's a cool element they brought to it. There's a lot of sensuality in the film. I've got some issues with how some of that was addressed. Um, but, you know, it's cool. But actually what I would say is I think it's visually a, an impressive piece of work, like an absolutely impressive piece of work to look at it conjures up images of theater and the set design is lavish it really sells you on the uh, the decadence of some of the, the, the lifestyles of some of those characters like lucy and mina um and it it really creates that it probably sets the bar for what we consider as gothic when we look at how vamp uh, dracula uh uh dresses how he comports himself where he lives his, his uh abode so yeah um that's what I will say for now. I've got some other bits to go into, but that's my that was my feeling while watching it. Plus, I also got to say, I don't I hope I'm not stealing anybody's thunder, but Keanu Reeves acting. Wow. 
<laughs> well, we, we we will we will we will get we will get to to, to the cast, I think. But uh, Hamza, what are, what are your thoughts, then? Um, not too dissimilar to Tony's actually. <clears throat> it's just like him. I watched the film as a kid, and it has been a while. Um, one thing as a child when I watched, it, I remember it being quite sexy. Kind of that was the impression I got of it. But yeah, it was so quite sexy. But yeah, it's yeah. it's not a horror movie. It's definitely um a gothic romance. It it becomes very apparent when he meets uh, Mina. The whole thing with longing and loss and um, desire, the like major themes in the movie. And it's really conveyed through the color palette in the movie, like these intense reds in the backgrounds in the sky and stuff. Possibly <clears throat> like the best use of red. Yeah, it's yeah, really the cool. Colors, it has, like, the colors are yeah, there's It has this really oppressive thing. And there was something I noticed as well, which I thought was really cool in terms of characterization. Um, it was a running theme. You know, at the beginning, his origin story where the it almost looked like shadow puppetry when the mm. people were being stabbed and stuff mm. that imagery is actually throughout the film it's in the cinema when he's yeah. about to bite her they cut to the sh- actual shadow puppets which are very re- reminiscent and you know the booth he kind of chills with chills mm. in chills in with her i think they were drinking and stuff he reads the letter there and he cries when you look at the booth in the background it almost looks like shadow puppetry as well mm. um Almost like this, he can't escape his true nature. He kind can't of, that's, his destiny. Yeah, that's kind of how I read it. Like he can't escape. Yeah, his destiny or who or his or who he is. It's always going to be there, no matter what he does. Like he's damned essentially, and that's kind of so, it's conveyed yeah. in the story and it's conveyed in the background. Visually. Like yeah, visually, which I thought yeah, it's it was actually a lot smarter than I actually remembered it being. I have to admit. So yeah, I, I give it that. How do you feel? Yeah, um, for me, uh, Dracula didn't seem like a bad guy per se. It does feel like he regretted it. It's almost like he regretted his decision to, you know, (laughs) denounce God um, and become this creature. But at the end of the day, for me, it felt like here was someone who was just trying to get their lost love back almost like it's almost like romeo and juliet in a way but you know and here the 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 humans were all the humans almost are the bad guys the the stopping them two from getting together what about you Stephen? what do you think um i i've listened to so I, I couldn't be bothered to read Bram Stoker because I've tried to read Bram Stoker a couple of times. I've taken a run out, run up at it, and uh, failed miserably. So um, I listened to the audio book. I watched the film twice through. Um, I'm not. Uh, it's in parts it's dull. Like it could have been cut. Some of it could have been cut down. I'm not actually a huge fan of the story. I've realised. I don't think even the, the original. I think the the love the love element is okay. It's a, it's a good element because I think what they probably realise is that the original Dracula probably wouldn't work so well. A lot of they add a lot of love to most films or love interest because it, inv- it gets certain people invested, mm. um, and it's a, a, an additional additional element where the original doesn't really have that. Um, Bram Stoker is just a bit of a dick. Um, so, uh, the use of color in the film was was fantastic. The visuals were really good. I loved the overlays. So you got like the train and the book and the narration, and I was just well, you know, it was so simple. <coughs> you could argue it that hasn't aged well, but in actual fact, I just think that it looked great. Yeah. Um, I could see that in a movie now, and, and still think it was quite it was quite cool, and and that kind of um, effect doesn't get used. I can't. I can't really think of any other movies that use that really well. That was, you know, you have the train in the background, the the, the book is writing in and it, him speaking, and I thought that was just that was just lovely. So there's elements of the film I actually love. My overall feeling towards the film is that um, I'm not going to be watching it again anytime anytime soon. Um, so uh, one of the things I'm going to ask, and, and, and Sunday touch on it is um the the cast i think I'll, I'll just i'll just start this sort of briefly um gary oldman is amazing 
and yeah. and, and every scene is just he's just great. He overdoes it a little bit, but I think Dracula himself is quite an exaggerated character anyway. Um, but I, I thought he was I thought he was absolutely wonderful. Uh, Keanu Reeves' English accent is a travesty. He should never do it again, ever. Um, I, I found Harker quite irritating throughout the entire film. Um, I, I like Keanu, uh, but I just I did not like him in, in this. I, he's got criticism. I think he got a Razzie. I think he's. I think uh, when I was going for the internet, um, it was it was part of the thirty worst acting uh, in, of all time sort of thing. I just it, it was it was shocking. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, it's not even just the accent; it's his whole performance. It's those bloody wolves are those bloody better. He doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't convince you that he's trapped in the castle. That oh, scene dude. where he was scaling the castle walls, there wasn't anyone about. Sit down. <laughs> he's just got okay, so, so you just hit that. So let, just, can I finish? Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. You yeah. just hit the hell, the hell, the head, the, flipping head, the nail on the head. What, that was one of the things I found. I didn't know if it was a stylistic choice from the director or if it was his acting. There was he was so okay with what he was seeing. If you see a guy's shadow acting independently, <laughs> <laughs> the guy comes in, the door closes by he slides across the wall, the floor. And Bro, it's, let me take- <laughs> I can, like, if I'm up with you, come up with, up with you, and you slid across the floor, I'll say I'll see you later. I'm sliding out of it. I was thinking, I was thinking to Don't. myself, sorry, sorry, Tony, but I was thinking to myself, if your shadow knocks shit over, you'd get pissed off with your shadow. I mean, you just, you just be knocking shit over all the time. It must be an absolute nightmare for Dracula. Anyway, carry on. Keanu <laughs> Reeves, I don't like. He has in in this film. I think. That there was, they're not going to hire. It's multi million dollars or whatever. Not going to hire a guy if they can't do it. I don't know what happened on set, what was communicated, or what happened, but it's a it's a bad performance. And not just picking on the guy, but the reason why I said it is because his performance actually takes you out of the experience of the film. Like it complete completely throws you out. When and I think the director does have some fault here because you can document the occasions where hold on a second, Keanu, why aren't you reacting to this? You turn up in the middle of a, of, of a dark path, getting stalked by a wolf. Nothing. Some random dude turns up in a carriage. His arm stretches across, which is a really good effect because they use the camera quite well to sort of more body features and stuff like that. Nothing. You, you, you go past a floating blue flame. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like you said, floating across the room, moving shadows, girls turning out of beds. Up, oh, a baby gets eaten. Then. Yeah, then, that does. When you, said, when, you, <laughs> no, when, no, you said, when you said it's not, when you guys said it's not a horror, I did think, well, there isn't, you know, many films that have baby eating. I mean, no, that's kind of horrific. It, no, it is horrific, but Keanu, Keanu yeah. doesn't, he take, his, his performance doesn't bring you into it. And because Keanu, it's, I keep going to say, but I gotta, I gotta say, I gotta say Keanu, because I think another actor would have played this very differently. His, his, the lack of emoting doesn't encourage you, to, doesn't bring you on a journey with that character. I tell so you, no. when you see all these things and he's not reacting, why should I? Who I thought was excellent as well was uh, Tom Waits. He played uh, Rainer, the, the mad guy in the asylum, the one that's eating the bugs. Oh. Yeah, I thought, I thought okay. in every scene, I really enjoyed every scene with him, especially when he's talking about a little kitten. <laughs> or, <laughs> oh yes, a cat, a cat. I, I, that's I another, really... another cat reference in horror film. Well, well, yeah, but there, there wasn't actually cats in this. Because he uh, ate the cat. He hasn't really wanted to make that. <laughs> uh, but I, yeah, I really sorry. liked him. Sorry, come on. What you going to say, Chad? I thought you were going to say something. No, 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 you go on. Um, speaking of Renfield in the, in the um, prison, uh, I did like his character. I did like that scene. I thought, I thought the um, interaction between him and the doctor were really cool. The major issue I had with him was, okay, he's ranting and raving throughout the thing, how the master's coming. The last minute where it mattered. Where his where his loyalty mattered, he rats him out. Neat Mina, get out of here for for no reason. The thing is, I get it because the film had a the film had a as much as I get it had some slow parts. For the most part, I thought it was kind of at a fast pace, but they should have had maybe a few scenes where the doctor and him were talking, and that it was helping him 
Like it was actually getting better. And then that scene where he rats her out or rats, um, rats him, rats her out, um, you know, he portrays Dracula. That would have made more sense. Even though I mean, no, that, like, so that his issue. mind control was wearing off a little bit. And he was yeah. like, um, yeah, yeah, he's coming to get you. So get out of here. But, but you know, he just went back to renting Raven. It was just a bit inconsistent. It was just a bit weird. For me, completely. In, in the film, his character is completely superfluous. Like as, as well acted as it is. It's cool to look. Yeah. Cool I, I as did the like shots it. are and the sets are with him in it. His act, his character is actually completely superfluous. Because they've inserted this love angle element with Dracula, it's ch- that's what I mean. It changes certain narrative elements away from the original, so it gives it a different thing. So Renfield's character is completely useless. You know, he serves no. You could completely cut his character out, and make yeah, no it, I did. I I felt like that. I felt like why is this character even here? Like he was just fun to. I love the interactions, but I just wanted more. I just thought, yeah, yeah just. If it was like the first time you see him with a doctor, he's completely nuts. Second time, the doctor's like, maybe he got him the cat. And then he's a, he's a little bit more calm. Like, you know, like the treatment's kind of working. Because that was just like, what? Well, he's kind of he'd, loud. Blue. He'd already worked with Dracula, hadn't he? he um, yeah, yeah. 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 Arco replaces him. Yeah. What, what confuses me is, is the, the point of it. <laughs> like, Harker comes over... Dracula keeps in the castle, gets all the information he needs, and goes over to England. Why did that not work with Renfield? They never, yeah. even the audio book, even the, the story doesn't. If Renfield's come back and he's, he's start raving mad, and that is so, it. Yeah, but I, I would say with that, bearing in mind when the period when the book is written, he start raving mad supposedly because of the things he has seen Dracula do. You know supposedly and it's supposed to be the warning to us that something terrible will happen mm. when parker goes to visit dracula you know we kind of get that sort of insight but as we say in the film it's not well executed at all and his character comes across as completely uh useless yeah a good portion of the start of the book actually describes how beautiful the country is while he's on his en route to um dracula's mm. castle but you don't get any of that it's no. all dark grim yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. uh, but he does, he does describe another, the beauty of the, the land quite a bit. Another element that the film touched on, which was really interesting, was Dracul buying up property in London. Yeah, I that don't was know quite... if it was like <laughs> it had another meaning behind it, where you know, like foreign um, traders or whatnot buying up property in london you know and that's actually that if that was a thing back then well yeah, yeah i mean we that's are the point, there, <laughs> there are a lot of undertones in the original or sorry in the book i should say and that's that's kind of i made a bit of an offhand comment about you know the, the turkish invasion and the links to vladi and Taylor. like in the book it's not explicitly said that dracula is vladi and Taylor, and there's loads of vampire stories that could be pulled on from different cultures and, and everything else um but in a, in a sense, Dracula represents the other. He represents the the foreign coming yeah. in to yeah. take the, the chastity own. of our women, to take our land, to take, take our, our things, jobs, to take our jobs. No, never take right. our freedom. Exactly. <laughs> and so it's quite interesting that in the film they use the uh, you know the Turkish, the basically the Crusade period as the instigator of this incident because as we know the, the, the crusaders is effectively the same principle of you know foreign invaders coming into a sacred land and people coming in to move them out and so on you know fear of the foreign once again kind of repeating um through yeah. history anyone who drops off after i said that at the beginning <laughs> obviously is not going to catch my clarifying statement <laughs> <laughs> We'll just Full circle. Certain sentences. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> just bored you with them later on. Um, so, what would you? What would be your sort of likes and dislikes? So, imitations, likes, dislikes. Well. So, again, I, I really do feel like I went on about the visuals in Aliens far too much last time, but the visuals in this are good. The colours are are great. 100%. Um, I, I think the, the choice, the costumes were great, apart from in fact. I, I don't know why Dracula at the start of the film would go into battle wearing latex. I didn't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe 
he had some sort of strap on, and that's why the <laughs> enemies were scared of him. <laughs> I mean, it was just, you know, it, it's meant to be plate, isn't it? It's meant to be like metal, but it's, it, yeah. it's, it, it's, it's like a, I, so, I thought that costume was bad. I, it was I, the worst one in Jurassic Well, you know, the film the film won like an Oscar for, for a costume. This mm-hmm. won two Oscars, three Oscars or something like that, right? Um, for, like costume and set design and stuff. I think, personally, while that armor is not functional, <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely it's, iconic. Exactly. It's definitely iconic. Iconic. It works yeah. on, the, on the level of, I just, it just works as a visual yeah. cue to this character. He's a visceral character. He's a Again, he's literally muscle you know it's like yeah. muscle on the on the outside you know he's yeah he's a bloody muscly visceral physical guy that's what i got from the armor i wouldn't want to wear that into a battlefield personally uh but you know <laughs> who, knows, who, who knows how people got down <laughs> in the 1400s huh? <laughs> I think, um, imitation i think we i i my my one was keanu i think i just i just i yeah, I didn't, I didn't get on with his character <laughs> at all. I mean, Harker is very wishy-washy in the book as well. Oh, fair play. But, I'm um, actually, but, I listen or read. But the um, the, uh, the the movie he was easy, easily the most irritating character. And in an actual fact, at certain parts, even though I'd watched it or I'd already watched it twice, I was uh, I was kind of hoping he'd like maybe that on this viewing he'd just die. <laughs> 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 and and Dracula, Dracula gets his wife. <laughs> like, I was just, I was, I, I but, be, that's, that's what I wanted deep down inside. It, it's not fair on him because the story itself says that he's inadequate. The story itself is saying that. So yeah. you're like, uh, this guy ain't shit, man. If his wife, if his missus doesn't care about him. You've got to wonder about the aftermath when she's gone in there <laughs> and then he comes out and like everything's meant to be great again. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing because after after he ki- she kills him at the end she beheads him, the spell doesn't wear off. She's still clearly in love with him, like she's kissing his dead body and stuff. Yeah. So I... that's gonna be a tough one. That's gonna be a tough well, one. Like... That's gonna be years of counselling. And uh... <laughs> I don't I don't think their marriage survived it. I think uh, Dracula two, which is just banging on about their marriage, um, it's just yeah. I don't think. You, yeah, you I, I think it was a wrap. He, you he were dumped. well into that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was still so, right. Yeah. Um, Hamza, you, you love you love some imitations of this movie. What, what do you like and what do you hate? Oh, who's that for me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the thing I there was a few inconsistencies in the movie, like the one I explained with um, uh, Jonathan's fear, like or lack of, and then there was the Renfield one with the random switch at the end, and then another one was at the at the very end when um. What's her name? Uh, Mina's doing this, the wind spell. Helsing is just looking at her. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. bro, what's going on, man? Like, she's actually messing up the plan. You just got to let her do this? That was really weird. I didn't really understand I, that. I, I, um, there, was, there was actually a scene I didn't really understand. Even. It was that scene. So the vampiresses kill the horses and then go for a bit of a nap. <laughs> and, and, and not only does he just find them with no problem at all and beheads them all. But then the, the killing of his horses doesn't even delay him. He still manages to get to the castle in time. I was a little confused by that, but I think they were actually on the grounds of the castle because, again, I was like, what? how the hell did they get there so quickly? But once um, the next day, you can actually see the where the, you know, he had made the fire circles. You oh, see yeah, them yeah. burnt out. Oh, so he was already Yeah, so I think he was already on the ground. Although, to to be fair, you would not follow, but Van Helsing turns up. It's it's us four together. We think maybe um, someone we like, someone we know is ill, and the doctor turns out to be Van Helsing. We're telling him to jog off. He's he's, 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 he's madder than a box of frogs. He is crazy. I loved, I'm not going to lie, I loved Anthony Hopkins in this, man. I won't lie to you. It's like as soon as he came onto the film, it's like someone blew cocaine in my face or something. Man, it was like whoa! <laughs> it was just <laughs> extreme. Of, and then he's devil's concubine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, guy, and then the line where he's—I think it was after um, Lucy's um, funeral—and he calls the doctor and is like, "Yes, um, I just need to." I just want to put a stake for her. I, I thought it was pretty. I just want to yeah. make a point of Lucy's funeral, right? Mm. Wow, 
who was the pathologist for that? Or whoever it is that put that body together after I saw the body. <laughs> it, no, it expl- all that shit was blood. Still every through the screen. And her body was intact. I saw that more of a... Casket? I didn't see that as literal, though. I think that was more of a dramatization of, like, maybe... I don't know. Um, the blood loss has finally taken her or something. Or it is a good... Dracula really? finally getting her. Like, it was more of a visual representation of something as a literal... Well, that's how I read it. Anyway. I don't know. Lucy's funeral. Right? Here's a question for you guys. Who's going to be chowing down on, on bloody roast... <laughs> While there's a dead vampire oh, yeah. body, and that roast was blood. That roast was bloody as well. That roast did not see a lick that, of fire, man. That, that, <laughs> the sorry, the send that back. Send um, that back. In the original story, she's actually killed a few children before they get yeah. her. Oh, yeah, yeah, and they didn't. They didn't include that. They were just like it was the first, her first snack. Um, yeah. Um, but that would have been, I reckon that would have been quite interesting. But uh, I mean, I guess. I mean, yeah. But you know, uh, well, so I mean, you're still going over your likes and dislikes, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, oh. You... So, um, so those are the things I dislike. My, I think my, li- my the thing I liked the most was the transitions were pretty cool. Mm. Um, there was a few, there was one where Jonathan was in the castle and um, it was after uh, Dracula's shadow puppetry um so i think he kind of engulfs <laughs> he kind of engulfs jonathan and then the screen goes to black and then we fade back into uh, a black typewriter where um mina's typing and there was another one where um i think it was a zoom up into um lucy's eye and then it fades back out and it's the circumference of a glass cup and i thought just things like that yeah, were kind of cool. I like that. yeah 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 so and the, also the music, that was another thing. At first I thought it was um, Danny Enf- uh, um, Enf- Enfield? No, not Enfield. Elfman. Elfman. Danny Elfman. Yeah, Danny El- El- Elfield. Um, <laughs> he has this kind of like methodical, bassy sounds. I forgot the composer's name. And then there's like chimes and piano. It kind of gave it this like whimsical, dream-like. Fairy tale. Yeah, which was cool. Like it, it did, on generally felt like I was in a, like in a, in a dream. And I think it was very well conveyed in the movie. Again, with the colors like we were describing earlier as well. So as much as, you know, it does have his issues, I generally think it does. Like, obviously, Keanu and uh, some of the weird acting choices as well. And I think some of the choices are just strained from the director, to be fair. They're just like, I don't know. They just kind of feel stilted in parts. Like, it doesn't low in some parts. It's like, what is going on here? Did you notice, did anyone notice, like, the, ex- the gratuitous kissing scene? Like each kiss yeah. is like a gratuitous kiss. It's never like a. It's never pet. tasteful. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, is that lost thing, isn't it? That's the whole thing. Maybe like, the director was just getting when, off in the background. When you're getting married, though, <laughs> when you're getting married, you're really going to be eating your bride's face on the altar. <laughs> I have a theory that Coppola is just a dirty bastard. Okay. The lesbian scene, the lesbian kiss. Unnecessary. Me, Mina but this. and. Yeah, Mina yeah. and Lucy kiss multiple people in the movie. Come mm. on. He's behind the thing going, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I read how um, Copland actually said to his, the, the male actors, including Anthony and uh, Keanu, with Winona, uh, I want you to um, say rude or bad stuff to her. Um, so that the, the the effect, and it's almost like a thing because even in Aliens, we were told that um, certain actors were told to um, and you know antagonize Ripley, yeah, yeah. you know, um, uh, and Sigourney Weaver, and again it happens in this movie as well. But apparently, uh, Anthony and Keanu were like, no. But um, Gary Oldman's character, Dracul, <laughs> he was told to uh, he, he was told to say horrific things in her ear during filming. To get awesome. out. Nasty boy. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman. Nasty. Great actor. I've liked so much of what he's done. He seemed like he would be that. that day. <laughs> uh, but Chad, <laughs> you, you have your likes, dislikes. Okay, so the, there's there's enough characters in the film to keep you entertained. Like that's my one of my likes. Yeah, there's a there's a lot going on in this movie. Um, so I have to give it that credit that you know it. It wasn't a complete 
jumble of things. There was a sense of direction. Okay, I like that. I like the music. The music was really good. Yeah, the, the music was really good, actually. Really, I really good. Liked it. Got, yeah. Especially when it was uh, Dracul's uh, moments on the screen, it got that, you know, got your blood flowing, let's say. So you can drink it. Uh, the makeup, the effects, even when we see the wolf um, scene, because I tell you what, I've seen movies in 2020 that have a werewolf. Oh my goodness gracious me. <laughs> So I've got to give it credit. It almost seems like we the werewolf the again, eh? Technology so much now that no just, rewind buttons worn out. <laughs> it just takes away the that that element. I, I mean, yeah, I have to give the visual effects. They were great. The makeup it was great. Um, what I didn't like about the film was it it got a bit choppy towards the end. Um, but that could just be again technology, camera, cameramanship. Um, uh, what I also didn't like was it, it did take me multiple, you know, multiple sessions to finish this film. Uh, but that's probably because it, it, you know, the scenes didn't just kind of flow that well that it would keep me wanting to keep carry on watching this. Um, but. Hey, apart from that, you know what? This is a no bullshit movie. You know, we don't have vampires with sparkly skin. We haven't got, uh, you know, crazy, uh, ridiculousness. It, it's a, it's a vampire, and if you want a vampire movie, this is, you know, the the closest I, uh, best vampire movie you can watch. I think some of the dialogue actually was quite was quite good. So he said, uh, "What is it?" Um, Van Helsing says to I think it's Quincy, or or, or he says. Uh, have you bought your have you bought your knife? Oh, he yeah. was like, I wasn't planning on getting that close. <laughs> and I, I just I thought, I thought that was quite a nice little little line. Um I thought the coach driver was weird. It, it, it almost Egyptian for me. He has like this helmet that looks like a yeah. a bird or something. It was so bizarre. This is what I thought was I thought was done really well in a lot of scenes where the camera and the costume is used to distort. The body, you know, so even when the coach driver reaches out, the way the camera moves, it's like he has a abnormally elongated arm, um, stuff like that, which kind of trigger that uncanny valley in you that make you think that's not right. You know, that I think stuff like that was done really, really well. Mm. This is the thing, though. As soon as I saw that, I would have been calling it Uber, mate. Now nah, I'm right. <laughs> I just call it Uber. That, mate. that was a lot yeah, of stuff. Know. Stuff like we discussed earlier. I'll tell you what, you know, should start playing poker. <laughs> this guy should start playing poker. Yeah, his face. <laughs> when a demon doesn't miss you, hey man, not bad. <laughs> so, and before when we when we did Alien, um, we said should this film be ever remade? But the problem with Dracula is that mother has appeared in so many uh, movies over the years. And you had Dracula Untold, which is probably one of the most recent ones. You had the BBC's version of Dracula. Dracula just gets remade. He's born to be remade, the character. But I, I read a really interesting fact um, that Dracula doesn't sell well. I think Bram Stoker's Dracula did very well. But for the most part, like Bra Dracula Untold was, I think, a bit of a flop. Um, and yeah. adding Dracula to any movie tends to make the movie go down a little bit. In terms of if you've got like a generic vampire film, then you just add the name Dracula. But I, I, I think it comes and it goes, though, isn't it? It's cyclical. You know, one every ten years is vampires, then it's zombies. You know, well, yeah, vampire, it's like, uh, vampire I think it's Dracula. Interesting to see a a, uh, and I think they did do this in Dracula Untold, but it was only for a for a very short period of the film where it was the origin story, isn't it? Where you saw the supposed black. Um, I think it would be interesting to see more of that as a remake, you know, with Vlad going around, you know, impaling, you know, getting all the... But wasn't that the folk mostly what they did in, in... I haven't seen Untold, but wasn't that kind of what they focused on? Like, there, was a, there, was a, there was a lot of it. Um, yeah, but... I just, like, going back to the whole vampire Dracula thing, personally, my favourite vampire movie is... Um, Interview with the Vampire. Yeah. Um, purely because it, you kind of, it was the, basically the day-to-day -day life of a vampire, more or less. 
where one from when the guy was transformed up until now, and it was a cautionary tale, which I thought was kind of cool. He despised it, which is to be fair, is a bit of a trope of vampires. Like they tend to kind of dislike it. But I think the fact that you saw him before that, just again, like with this Bram Stoker movie, you kind of saw him before, but unlike uh, the Dracula in this, um, I can't remember the Brad Pitt's character. There was that. The stat, yeah. No, no, no. The uh, stat is uh, oh, sorry, Louis Brad Cruz. Cruz. Tom Cruise. Uh, yeah. Louis, Brad stop Pitt, yeah. whining, Louis. <laughs> Louis, yeah. Louis had he was there was a very strong sense of humanity to him, which kind of um, endeared you to him. If you know what I'm trying to say, he he felt like a really, to be fair, good guy. Like he really did. And the position I got him there was kind of tragic as well. Um, and I liked how they depicted being a vampire with like all the statues changing. Remember like, like time and reality kind of changed and stuff. So the way they depicted that was cool. Um, but now we're talking about another Dracula movie. I mean, another vampire movie. But yeah. my point is, that is just a vampire film. Dracula, I don't know. There's something, it's almost too grand. But, like, he yeah, can't okay. relate to him. I don't know. The, the thing with Dracula, Dracula is that he's not going out there like a monster. I mean, if you left, he's like a snake. If you antagonize a snake, then the snake will bite you. If you don't, it'll leave no, you it's like, it's like the whole Superman thing. Like, it's like the whole Superman thing. Most, like, for example, Tuna and I were talking about this before. Most of the time, people don't, can't get into Superman is he's too big. He's too powerful. Yeah. So you can't really relate to him. Vampires are, they're not on that level, really. They're just kind of the, you know, the humans that were just infected somehow. Um, Dracula is like, he's a god. He's always seen as the first. He's always seen as the first, the biggest, the best, yeah, yeah. the most so you, powerful. Exactly. But, so you, so can't, you, don't, you can't go anywhere after Dracula. Yeah, you can't. Dracula is the beginning and the end. Yeah. But I think that's also like, a, that's a bias of basically the successful Dracula Dracula inspired films and vampire films that we've had since, you know, Nosferatu. Um, the vampire mythology predates Bram Stoker's Dracula. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that, I mean, it is what it is. A lot of people now associate Vlad the Impaler with Dracula, but I. They Bram even Stoker never. Uh, they yeah, even yeah but Bram Stoker film. never explicitly mentioned Vlad the Impaler, right? And. You know, his references and the things he drew on are, are varied. Uh, there's loads of other stories. And look, pretty much every culture has some type of blood-sucking yeah. thing. Africa as a, to uh, India. You know, yeah, every culture pretty much has it. You know, So I think probably the issue with... Uh, so vampires to one side. With Dracula per se, the issue with Dracula is it's Bram Stoker's idea. You know, leave it. Like, I think the way that they told it is is fine for the time. But if you're going to update it, you know, we run into those same issues with aliens, which is we've seen it now. So what's there to be afraid of? Now that I know Dracula is in love with some stupid girl, what, what do I have to be afraid of, right? Who's that fear? Because he's not going to come after you. He's not even going to change this girl into a vampire unless she asks for it. He's polite. Yeah, he is pretty you know, polite. There's, there's, there's no fear factor, right? Um, and, you know, with Interview of the Vampire, it's a good film. I like the characters. And I agree with you, actually, it's probably probably my favorite vampire related product but they're not scary they're relatable they're humans they're, they're human. they have human relatable emotions and experiences is he going to the loo he's going to the loo <laughs> <laughs> could it I'm hold sure, it in uh, i'm sure this will be Kyle anyway the dam's about to burst <laughs> <laughs> yeah um it's a, it's it's a theatrical film and it does that very well. Um, but in terms of a remake, for me, I'd say... Oh, leave this a wait, man. Because Steven gets back, man. <laughs> exactly. We can't wait. <laughs> You'll see the re-recording, <laughs> innit? No, but, yeah, but he needs to Steven interact with thing. Oh, of course, of course. Exactly, man. This guy, man. Well, this would be edited, innit? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be on screen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Um... Track. Yeah, but it's, I gotta be honest, man. Keanu Reeves' acting was so terrible. <laughs> that's that's the one thing that was stuck. It's just like the thing is, it takes you out of the film. It takes you out of the film. Like you're watching it, and it's like, oh, excuse me, I need to go to that by <laughs> land. What? <laughs> then there's one part where Dracula offers him the food, and he's eating. Dracula's talking. It's literally like this. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and he's he's like. Dude, accent sl slides in so many times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> What's this? Then when he comes back from being that 
catch that man vibe dude he's like oh he's going yeah he's grown young oh, yeah, yeah, yeah when he sees it from the he's camera he's young <laughs> it's that man it's that man he's grown so young <laughs> <laughs> I was wow. absolutely gagging for a bit. I literally couldn't wait. I'll sort it in the edit. <laughs> I'll just keep it because it's funny as hell. Okay, so um, get to the horror or add to the junk heap uh, in terms of... Uh, or anything in between those two things, really. Um, I'm going to say... I'm going to say... I'm going to get to the horror on this. I'm going to tell the fans to get to the horror with this one. Just because... You know what? You're not going to get another movie like this. It'll either be too stupid, too far-fetched, or it just won't work. You won't be scared. Um, This is a classic. You know, it tells an origin story well. It tells you where, how Dracula, how, you know, Dracula became Dracula and where he ended up. It's it's a complete 360 movie. You don't need any sequel to it or anything like that. So for me, I'd, I'd say get to the horror on this one. Hamza? Um, yeah, I get to the horror. I mean, it's a great example of a kind of a gothic horror. Um, I think, is it Crimson Peak? I still need to watch it. Crim- um, with, I oh. do not like that movie. Oh, terrible. At all. Uh, I, I, a- I think um, it's another one that's really good visually. Mm. But oh boy, I had Not such high it. hopes. I just think it's, I think I honestly think it is badly written, badly acted, trash. Oh, but say. I would love, I'd love to be correct on that. I'm not a fan. I'll watch all. it and I'll give you my um, opinion on it. But, good um, use of colours, though. Really good use of colours. Exactly from what I know of it. But my point I was trying to make, although I haven't watched it, I know about the movie. I think without you know films like Dracula, this probably wouldn't exist as much as we hate it. Twilight. We wouldn't have existed. Um, it has kind of probably did start a, a genre in you know this kind of horror romance kind of thing. Um, visually, it's great. Again, there's some inconsistencies that I thought were silly. So they pointed out one thing I think in a group chat: um, the amount of grey on Keanu's hair changed quite significantly in one particular scene. This guy was looking. Did you not see the suitcase he had just for men? <laughs> <laughs> At one point, this guy was looking like Rogue from uh, the X-Men. <laughs> this guy was <laughs> and then turned to another scene and it's back to a slightly duller grey. Um, yeah. The stuff I said with some of the character stuff was just like a bit weird as well. But all in all, um, yeah, amazing visuals. So yeah, it's going to be a uh, uh, get to the horror for me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sunday, what do you reckon? Get to the horror? No, <laughs> no, um, no, no. So for everything that I like in the film, I do something to get off my chest with this thing, which is, and you know, it's not, you know, there's not such a thing as a total rubbish. There's always good in, in everything like that. Uh, the use of red symbolically and visually, I think everybody talks about the visuals is, is really, really impressive. Um, the yes, I said the set design is really impressive. I just think that there are too many issues with the narrative and the drive of the film to make it worth watching in its current iteration. Like, if you unless you're watching it specifically to marvel at the set design and costume, um, I think there are too many issues. I think there are too many things that throw you out of the viewing experience. As great as Van Helsing is, as great as Anthony Hopkins plays a character. I'm sorry, but that guy is just a crackpot and throws you completely out of it. You know, just it, he's just a bit too yeah. kooky. Um, in the real rough. world, in, in the real world of that movie, it would be a bit much. Yeah. I guess for entertainment, it's cool, but it, it realistically, is like this is too crazy. It, it throws you out, and, yeah. then, and even the characterization of him in some areas to me didn't make sense. Like I think we talked about the part where you know they get attacked by the the bride of vampire and you think, wait a minute, you're Van Helsing, yet you're being seduced by Renona Ryder and you need the biscuit on her forehead to break out of it. Like, you know, it it kind of didn't make sense unless <laughs> Anthony Hopkins just wanted to give her a kiss. Like yeah. I don't know. Um I think the big issue for me really is that because they've inserted this love element into and I get it, they did it to freshen up the story, but because they put this love element into the relationship between Dracula and Mina, it unfortunately means we don't have an opportunity for horror to develop. 
because Mina chooses um, in a lot of instances to be with Dracula and she acknowledges this mysterious relationship. It also has a lot of strange connotations for what that means. Like she never met the guy before yet somehow because of some past, doesn't mean she was a reincarnated version. Does it mean the soul of the, like she had a connection with him. In the book it's explained because he, he bites her and gives her an illness and then develops a connection with her. Whereas in this, it doesn't make sense. Um, again, it doesn't make sense why Dracula attacks Lucy, except to give Chad the only reason to watch this film. <laughs> you know, it it doesn't make sense. Like it happens. It's visually iconic. It's visually, uh, you know, I like it's eye catching, but it just doesn't make sense. You know, when you're actually watching this film, trying to piece the pieces together, it just doesn't hold up. It doesn't really make sense. And I think those weaknesses unfortunately make it a, it's only two hours it's not the longest film but it feels like it takes absolutely forever uh, and it grinds to a halt in that middle piece where um where dracula comes into london and uh, we lose that narrative drive because of that decision i think to add that romance element which i also think takes away the horror from the film nah for me i'm out what's the opposite yeah. of get to the horror uh, 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 Get out of the water. Hasta la vista, baby. <laughs> Hasta la vista. Hasta la vista for this one, then. Yeah, I, I am torn. I actually think that Shad's has won me around because I was going to join you, Tundo. I don't think I'm going to watch this again in a hurry. And, it, you know, there were a lot of movies you watch. So if Aliens is on, if Alien is on telly, the last one we reviewed, if Alien is on telly, I might actually sit and watch it, yeah. even though I've watched it hundreds of times. Bram Stoker's Dracula's on telly. I'm probably not going to stick around and, and watch it. Um, but so much so, I think it was Shad. Uh, I have to touch on this as well. Is that you're not going to get this again. This actually isn't a bad telling of Dracula, really. In in terms of all the other connotations of Dracula we've had over the years, back, back white to colour, this telling of the story, the actual original story, granted they've added the change and, and added the romance. I don't think we're gonna I don't think we're gonna see it again. Um I don't I think it will do as as well as as that one did in, in 92. So I'm gonna give it a get to the horror. I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to but I actually I actually think it will I think Chad says it's one round. <laughs> because there are That's elements of it. That are, are great. I, in, in all fairness, actually, after watching it and listening to it, I don't particularly like Dracula as a story. I actually don't. I, actually don't. I, um, I really like Frankenstein. I loved Frankenstein. I read that book, loved it. I read it a couple of times. I, I'm not a fan of Dracula. I'm really not. But you know, I, I think as well, it's there's a thing that I found a bit disappointing with the film, watching it again. So when you read the book, the book has a massive focus on the media. You know, and the different media formats used to communicate is actually useful in the book. And to be honest, without that, the book would probably be quite dull. I, I didn't mind the book, but I liked it because of that embracing of, you know, it, you could argue that it's not the gang, whatever they're called, the, the vampire hunter crew that beat Dracula. It's technology that beats Dracula, you know. Um, but that wasn't featured in the film at all. Like, Can I ask a question to Nick? Hmm. If it wasn't for your relationship with the book, do you think, I know it's hard to, to, to answer, obviously, but do you think your opinion on the film would have been different? I'm, you didn't... I'm, genuinely, yeah, I'm genuinely trying to look at the film separate to the book, but use my, my knowledge of the book to kind of draw parallels between what worked in the book and what didn't. So, you know, what I'm saying really is that ultimately those elements that did work in the book, in the book worked because the book had a focus on, it, right? The book was about how these methods of communication would be used to, not necessarily it's about, but it's a massive feature of the, the way the story is told. Whereas just giving us that story as it is, just straight like that, it's a, as, we, as we can see, it's a very clunky narrative. Um, you know, you were constantly told what's happening. We very rarely get shown what's happening. We're constantly hearing some narrations about things that we can clearly see what's going on. You know, like it feels overly a bit, uh, what's the word, heavy handed in its uh, yeah. exposition and explanation. I think, I think you're, you're constantly, you, you might not realize it, but in the back of your head, you're constantly asking yourself about uh, characters' motivations. 
like we mentioned with Renfield, like we just we just don't know what the. I still think it was well acted, but I don't really understand the point of him. Yeah. yeah. You know, or or what happened prior, and and, and it never really touches on that. Why would Dracula have this guy reject him, get another guy, and that's when he moves to England because this solicitor is yeah. the best solicitor. He I sold think, the house. I think what's interesting with that then is the fact that. If you think about that happening in today's world, we would have we would have all manners of unions get involved, human rights get involved. And what I mean by that is, okay, back when this was filmed, you know, it was the the fantasy of this Dracula. It was it was the you know werewolves was a thing. You know all these stories and this and the other. It 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 made people. Uh, it kind of you know it scared you to a point, and also fascinated you. Yeah. When we see the scene with Renfield in the mental asylum, that to a degree happened. You know. Uh, People were treated like that. You know, people were given shock treatment. People were, uh, you know, if you were if you were mad, it was because, you know, there was no help. There was no help for you. Yeah. And um, I think that that's a I think the film kind of captures that way of thinking. So that's why if we if we watched it in today's day and age, it wouldn't work. That's what I mean. It just wouldn't work. Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think that in a, in a, if it was being remade, they would definitely handle the mental health element of Renfield differently. Yeah, maybe to show he's you know so you, you got to you, oh sorry sorry yeah no no obviously mental health really in those times I mean he he would have been sort of seen as being a uh, genet what's the word uh, a degenerate or something on those lines yeah the compassion that society would have shown it would have been minimal um, you know and, and ironically. He's being chastised for eating bugs, and he mentions that the bugs are actually nutritious, which obviously we know scientifically is actually be correct. He right? is correct. Yeah. But he's shown as being crazy and out of his mind because he's not acting in the so-called civilized uh, way that we yeah. that we would expect. Um, I was just going to say something that that Eastie mentioned, which is the character motivations. And to be, I keep going on about it, but I genuinely think it's it's a shame, not a shame, because I appreciate the love element, but it's pros and cons. By adding that love element in, we lose a lot of the reasons behind things. So are we just to assume that because Nina looks like Dracula's wife, that's her motivation for wanting to have her blood sucked and turned into a... <laughs> turned into no. a she, she turned very quick. And in no. fact, she's found out he's killed her mate. She gets very upset that about it, and then reverts back to that was well, a day one. Well. That was a day one. That was, one. The, that was uh, a day one. Hypnosis. That was a hypnosis. <laughs> no, to Nate, that, was that was actually a major issue I had with. Now that you mention it, yeah, I remember bringing say actually wrote that in my notes. Just because you look like her, now you love her. But then again, the movie did kind of cover its tracks. There was a part in the film where she was, she had, she said she was, she had a dream or a memory, and she described his yeah. homeland. Yeah. So uh, it's kind of like uh, connected no. through time. Yeah, there was Tenuous a bit, threads, if you ask me, man. Yeah, I, 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 I got I got a few notes. There was one note that uh, Dracula comes back from that battle, and one of the first things the priest says is, uh, "She committed suicide. She's not going to get to heaven now." <laughs> <laughs> you, you, don't, like, you feel like you might want to break that gently. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I, that whole like as great as it looks. I, so this whole thing was just a big misunderstanding because somebody sent a letter. Oh, your husband just died in battle. Also, I don't believe this also, random letter that someone threw through yeah. my window. Well, yeah, <laughs> I signed Dave the honest. How is <laughs> this? What was DHL existing or Hermes existing no, back they, then? They fired, they, fired a, they fired an arrow. Get to, <laughs> Killer. Was the last, do, that? do you think he would trust a message that was fired at you on an arrow? Their first plan was for that what arrow to it? kill you, and then the how second plan—it's <laughs> like a Monty Python, isn't it? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, this message was signed by your uh, enemy across the border. I mean, how was it signed? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, it is I, kind of flimsy, man, to be fair. Very flimsy. It's very flimsy. And because of that, we lose that opportunity to develop really? actual genuine motivation. And, and even Dracula's motivation is like, so just because she looks like your wife, you're going to pursue this girl? You don't even know. Vlad must have been very nervous about ever leaving the house, really. <laughs> she was quite a fighter. Oh, he's he said he would be five for it. He's been ten. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He 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 dodged an arrow with that one, if you ask me. But the thing is, <laughs> you know, I have lost portions <laughs> yeah. of time to uh, be with you for whatever reason. Like, it was a heavy line, but it's a sweet boy line, isn't it? Another thing, sorry. <laughs> sorry to, this one. Use that one tonight. Cross <laughs> uh, portions of time to be with you. <laughs> Another, there was one more inconsistency as well. Look, okay. So apparently he willed himself into having this curse, right? To having his powers. Mm. If this guy was so powerful, why didn't he will her back to life? <laughs> what the hell? Exactly. It's, hey, it's a movie. What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> why didn't he? Why did it? No, because she fell off the... Yes. She fell down well, into the cursed, sea, remember? Apparently he, he cursed so passionately that he was right. turned into a vampire. What, was he some kind of magic, magician? Then he should have cursed so passionately if he should have to be alive again. Bring it back. He could have actually turned her into a vampire there and he could have turned yeah. her into a vampire. Yeah. For, no, for but her body was gone. Her but she was, was dead. long gone. Yeah. No, she wasn't. I don't, know, I, don't, I don't know how the rules work. The rules actually, she was, one thing I did notice is she looked quite good for someone who'd fallen into, jumped off uh, 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 the parapet into the waters. She was well, dry as a bone. Like I said, I mean, there wasn't like mud on her or anything. She just had a, And she had a bit of blood. Coming from a man. Like... <laughs> they did say they said she fell into the river. They didn't say what the river was of. It could have been a river of pillows. <laughs> <laughs> she died comfortably in her sleep. <laughs> <laughs> While falling 250 feet down to the pillowy death. <laughs> but yeah, I tell you what, if they here's the thing, like as you say, Dracula vampires is a recurring thing. If they were specifically gonna remake Dracula. Um, I, I think it should be a period piece. Uh, ultimately, if it, if they, I don't think it could be brought into the modern age, as in our no. contemporary age, I should say. I think it needs to be a period piece. Whenever, whenever Dracula is brought into the modern age, because they did that with the BBC series, it is jarring. Oh, yeah. That's it what they did. Massively yeah, jarring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a modern. The third episode, it, it takes, the third the third episode takes you massively out of it. And mm, the yeah. first and the second, the first and the second episode, one and two are really good, actually. Genuinely, yeah, I, was, I was quite enjoying it. And by the third, you are so removed from the, mm. the two things you'd watch. Yeah, I, I stopped it. I haven't finished it. Oh, wow. I didn't want to okay, finish it. It was just so annoying. Um, no. But I'm not surprised by that. Like it, it's, it's, it's a rom- It's even, it's a romantic piece. Even the descriptions of travel, descriptions of the environments, descriptions of all those kind of things, just so integral to the story. It just, it just seems to me like it can't work outside of that. It can't it's work like, in an age where you can just pick up a phone and say, there's a weird guy outside my window. Well, Dracula, Dracula himself, the story is a, uh, someone from the, what would you consider the old world gets introduced to that time, the new world, but still it's, it's still old work. Because yeah. imagine, but when you start putting it even further forward to our timelines, it's too much. He's yeah. it, it, like the effects between him being a warrior and having lots of battles to going to Victorian London where cinema is have started. And that, that's good. You do not get Dracula using a bloody iPhone <laughs> and, yeah. you know, and, well, and, and Skyping three boys. It's why, it's why I think like vampires have longevity. Like vampires could constantly be reinvented from interview with a vampire to Twilight, you know, completely. They, they could just reinvent. But Dracula, I feel, is trapped. In, in that, that period, you know, in yeah. that time period, you know, and that's um, and if they were to remake it, they just definitely need to cast a better actor. <laughs> I, would like, I, would, I would genuinely like to see a retelling of the story, but really horror, really horrific, like more of a no. dark story. What Harker goes through being even worse. <laughs> what the, what, in fact, I just want to see Harker punished, to be fair. Um, <laughs> like the story behind Renfield and, and how exactly. He ends up back, you know, mm. an, 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 an a raving lunatic. 
Like, really, really go dark with it. I think that's the yeah. only version of Dracula I'm going to be even more yeah. remote interested like, in. What did he cool. see? What did he see that made him lose his mind? What did Dracula make him do that made him I, swear such loyalty to him? You know, like I don't think a, Dracula should bit. be a sympathetic character. Sorry, I didn't mean to go shorter, but I just don't. I don't think he should be a sympathetic character. No, I agree with that. At all. But the thing is, I think a character that's completely di- diabolical, like an actual scumbag could work. American Psycho. Um, what's his name? Um, the character's uh, name. Uh, Jason. Uh, Jason. Jason. Yeah. Um, Patrick Bateman. Uh, Patrick yeah. Bateman. That's it. Yeah. Patrick that's Bateman. Bateman. Something Bateman. Pa- yeah. Patrick he Bateman. I'm is, sure. And in the book, he's even worse, as you, I'm sure you can imagine, because you can get away with a lot more in a book. Um, he is a complete scumbag. Um, he's like a racist, womanizing, well, murderer. To be fair. Um, but in the film, you can't. You kind of. You You're know. Kind of mm-hmm. like him. In a weird way, yeah, in, in a strange actual, way. In actual fact, in, in the film, he's like arguing about like there's that there's that, that bit where um they're talking. Uh, it's almost about race and stuff, and it and and the world as it is. And he takes a stance. It's very left wing, and yet I yeah. did get the impression, um, without having read the book, I did get the impression that he should be well, he, he should be more scummier than than he was being portrayed in the movie. But the thing is, he was he's got a disguise that he portrays. On the outside, inside uh, he's a he's a total monster. But even if, if but in the book and in the film, you you know he you know his inner thoughts and you see what he does on the outside, and you still can't help but you know kind of like him. Maybe it's because he's kind of dealing with other scumbags as well. I, I don't know what it is, or maybe it's just a portrayal, or maybe it's just flipping Christian you, you, uh, you, Christ, you. Christian Bale. I don't know what it is, but you can't help but think, okay, okay. he's kind of likable to some degree. Maybe, um, like you said, maybe you maybe see some of the, you see from his lens that some people are worse, even though he's bad, you see that some people are. Possibly. Or yeah. is it just the fact that the story says, here, here's your main character, so you have to like him, if that makes any sense. I've always wondered about that. You know, If you were to see, for example, the bad guys first in the story, and they showed you a, a pretty decent chunk of who they were, and mm-hmm. then things were to flip, would you now have problems with who the character, the protagonist is meant yeah, to be? Yeah, but this, be this is bad. what I mean. Yeah, this is what I mean. This is why classic movies can't, shouldn't really be remade. Because we then start looking at it from, we start thinking, oh, maybe it's because of this, maybe it's because of that, you know. Maybe this is a mental health issue, obviously, in you know, there are mental health issues, don't get me wrong. But what I'm talking about is Dracula in person. I can imagine if it was remade, there'll be like people saying, oh, but he's just so misjudged, you know, um, that, you know, he, he's got mental health issues, you know, we need to stick up for him, you know. Like, no, no, Dracula, <laughs> yeah, infatuated with this woman he lost ages ago. That's all there is to it. We don't need this modern age thinking of how oh he's, he's, he's this that and the other. But that's what makes. But that's what makes watching movies ultimately so interesting. Because I, I mean, there's lots of even for example, Joker, the one that came out not too long ago. I, I actually he's genuinely love that. Yeah, uh, but he, that was a brilliant film. <laughs> he he again is a guy. A lot of people found empathetic, but he is also kind of a you know he's kind of a he's kind of an asshole as well, and he's not he even murder. Yeah, exactly. Not only that, the the film categorically tells you he's not even a leader, really. He kind of people around him and what he's done turn him into a leader. He didn't even have any agency. So it's kind of interesting. Like when a I film think, uh, shows you a protagonist, are we just led? Are we just? Did we just go with it? I do. I, I do think. I do think that film in particular. Mention that film holds a mirror up to our society quite a bit. Mm. Um, in terms of who we hero worship and. And uh, and choose to follow. I, I think a good majority. I think a good majority. If, if you had rich, because you, you, you've got this, you do have an underlying for a lot of people a hatred for the rich, and and that movie kind of cuts into that. But I think if we were to see something similar, I do think that a lot of people would be supporting. It. So would that mean you'd have yeah. to change Dracula's wealth? If it was done in the modern time, how would you make him an empathetic character? Do you change him from a rich warlord, you know, that's kind of surrounded by decadence? Do you make him a an everyday everyday guy on the street? You know, um, I, I really really like Pinhead, 
I love the line from Hellraiser where he says, compared to the decades of your pain, this will seem like a memory of heaven before he's about to kill some, some woman. Pinhead, has, is, later on, there is ambiguity in you know, the, the detail how he became who he was. But the first movie, he is just pure, unadulterated yeah. evil. No empathy at all. No need for it. And I think I, I do, I'd like to see Dracula like that because in the in the in the book he's he's not. I don't think he's. I don't. I don't think he's empathetic. You can correct me if I'm wrong. To now, I mean, I only no, he's not. It, he's not. It, it, there's no. Like, he's a monster. He is the classical monster. And so, you, you know, sound like Ash right now. <laughs> <laughs> I admire it. What was he? What was he oh, saying? Yeah, 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 I know yeah, what yeah. you mean. It's quite impressive, really. <laughs> oh, oh, he says, um, he's like good luck and stuff. Like, uh, uh, do can we kill it? Uh, no, or something. You know, just, he, he, he. Well, no, because actually, the alien is a good, a good example. Yeah, just pure you know, evil. Yeah, we don't yeah, have but, to always empathise with our villains. You're not going to, you're not going to empathise with an alien, are you? Oh, look at it, it's such a poor you creature. Empathise with ET. <laughs> that, I'd, I'd be more scared of ET <laughs> than Alien, because at least I know where I stand with Alien. This ET character. Be you know what he's going to do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, probing you with his finger. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you know, I think to Anders' point, I think the character we spend the most time with often becomes that's the lens. That's ultimately the lens that the director wants us to adopt. We spend the most time with Dracula in this film, so we adopt his lens. Um, you know, so we're supposed to root for him uh, bizarrely in a weird way. We're supposed to root for him, even though. Traditionally, Dracula is the bad guy. You know, yeah. that was this iteration. That was this iteration, and that iteration comes off the backdrop of Dracula basically seen as the corny, "I want to suck your blood." Oh. You know, that was that iteration. So that's done. Like if they then wanted to, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they wanted to bring this no. into a modern, into a modern, like as I said, I don't think it should be. I don't think it can work in a contemporary setting. But if they were, then. And if the decision was for Dracula to continue to be the main character, because let's face it, I don't think a lot of those other characters have legs except Renfield, right? I don't think, I think those characters, even, even in the book, even in the film, even in multiple iterations, those characters are just basically 1D guys, you know, and girls. Um, Dracula is the only one who I think I, I thought could Lucy's expand on. And, very, um, had a lot going on. Nah, oh, Lucy is just, yeah. Lucy's just a symbol. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, no, the thing well, is with, with Lucy, like, I, I think Lucy <laughs> is basically, for me, I just think, I think her character is too on the nose in the sense that she's clearly a representation of Mina's repressed sexual yeah. uh, desire. They're you the know, same character. She goes the wearing, two sides yeah. of the same character. Yeah. Exactly. There she goes wearing red, sleeping with werewolves and fraternizing <clears> with <throat> top all these suitors while Mina is, you know, demure and waiting for her betrothed, blah, 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 blah. I just felt that that was too on the nose and didn't even really contribute to the story. Um, but basically, right, so you got Dracula and then you got Renfield as two options for this lens of this story. I think if it was contemporary, focusing on Renfield and maybe doing like maybe a, uh, you know, the tale of, it, it probably would be like an, an, a, a tale of someone who has been put through that abuse and what their character develops into and how they might reintegrate with society while haunted, knowing that their, their overlord is uh, plotting his return one day and you've got tasks which you haven't fulfilled. Can you fulfill them? Are you morally obliged to fulfill them? You know, that's, I think there's some interesting kind of cool. questions here. Yeah. I tend to, um, I, I, did, I did find out something about this myself in this movie, and that is there are horror scenarios where I would be quite happy to die. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know which one you're referring to. <laughs> Where I'm just like, you know what? <laughs> I'm I'm happy with this. Kill me. <laughs> Are you? The way they put it, it looked like they punctured his penis in one one shot. <laughs> hey, at least the dick was in the mouth at one point. That's what I meant. <laughs> the, the thing is, if I was Dracula, I'd be pissed off, man. If I saw him in London, I'm like, man, I mean, I left you with three babes. I mean. 
whoa, what's going on? Hey, I gave you food, I gave you shelter, I gave you a bed, three beautiful ladies, and what's this wrong is with what you do to me. This is what you do. <laughs> it is kind of crazy. Yeah. Right, anyway. Uh, this this is longer than Alien, and we love Alien. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I think we'll, we'll talk a bit more after, but let's uh, let's leave it there. I think this did get the gets the horror. It's three versus versus one, so this this passes the bar. Only Jesse would have been evenly split if if she had done convinced the other one. So um, that's it. Goodbye. All. Remember to like and subscribe. Anyway, right. Who's discussing the oh, next film? Then? I forgot one stupid thing. You know when 